Environmental Science A-Level. Here you're going to get some information about what environmental science is, why you may want to study environmental science, what the entry criteria is, and some specifics about what the course involves. So for those of you that aren't sure, what is environmental science? It's the study of natural systems and how humans interact with the environment. When we say environment, that includes all the living components, but also the non-living things that they interact with. So, for example, soil, rocks, water, etc. And lastly, environmental science is about finding solutions and solutions to environmental problems require deep understanding and knowledge of these interactions. So let's look at some of the key issues of our time. On the next few slides, you'll see some images and you want to see if you can associate these images with any environmental problems that you know about. And some of these problems may very well be the drivers for your interest in this subject. So here on this slide, have a think about what environmental problem you might associate with the images you see here. And uh, what these represent are poaching and the wildlife trade or the illegal wildlife trade. And that is one major issue to do with conservation and biodiversity at the current time. Here on the second slide, you can see some more images and these represent droughts and flooding. So both droughts and flooding can be consequences of global climate change. So you can see how some issues are interlinked. Here we have issues to do with the health of our oceans. So we can see bleached corals, we can see plastics in the ocean, and we can see the effects of overfishing. Here we can see these images representing deforestation and habitat loss. These images here representing wildfires and poor air quality. And finally, we've got mass agriculture and monoculture. So we can see in this image, palm oil plantations as well. However, at this time more than any other, we have the ability to connect across wide regions, to educate people on a large scale. And on this slide, we can see some of the awareness creators and influencers that are bringing attention to the key issues of our time. So the course structure of environmental science will allow you to explore each of these issues and more in greater detail. In the first year, you'll focus on the living and physical environment. So the living environment involves the conditions for life on Earth. How was life able to evolve on Earth? Uh, issues to do with conservation and biodiversity and what are the processes that occur within the biosphere that allow life to continue. You'll also learn about the physical environment, which is more non-living components that contribute to ecosystems. So things like the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, which is to do with rocks and uh, natural cycles and soil. Then in the second year, you'll learn about the Earth's resources, pollution and sustainability. So Earth's resources, we're looking at energy, agriculture and food resources from the aquatic system, as well as from the forest. We'll look at pollution across all the different areas where that occurs, water pollution, air pollution, pollution on land. We'll look at sustainability, so how can we build in more sustainable practices into the way we utilise the Earth's resources. And we'll underpin that all by studying about research methods. So how can we understand the environment better by doing research in the correct way? To gain entry onto environmental science, you need a grade five in maths a grade five in science. So that can be a GCSE single subject science or one of your combined science grades and a grade five in GCSE English language or literature, preferably 
or another predominantly written-based GCSE subject, for example, history. So hopefully that all sounds good to you so far. Before we find out what else you're going to do on the course, have a little go at our quiz to test your knowledge about how much we know about our planet already. Um, the first question is to do with conservation. So you've got some animals here and the task is to list them from the lowest numbers left in the world to the highest numbers left in the world. And these are all critically endangered species, according to the IUCN. Have a look at the answers and see how you did. Coming in first with fewest numbers remaining in the wild is the Vaquita porpoise, just 10 remaining. Second is the Amma leopard with 85 remaining. Third, the tiger with 3,900. And fourth is the black rhino, 5,500 remaining. Fifth, we've got the West Lowland gorilla, about 100,000 remaining. And sixth, the Borneo orangutan, where there's 104,700 remaining. Hopefully you got some of those in the right order. Now we'll take a look at climate change. So which three countries do you think have the highest total carbon dioxide emissions? You can list them in order, first, second and third, and then uh, click to the next slide to check your answers. And so in first place, we've got China, in second place, we've got the USA, and in third place, we've got India. And what about now the climate change heroes? So which three countries do you think might have the highest proportion of their energy obtained from renewable sources? So solar, wind, hydro, and so on. Um, see if you can rank them first, second, and third. And again, click to the next slide for your answers. Here for renewable energy, in first place, we've got Iceland, in second place, Costa Rica, and third place, Germany. How much water does it take to produce our food? So can you rank the following products for highest amount of water required to least amount of water required in their production? So we've got beef, pizza, chocolate, and rice. And you can click to the next slide for the answers. This one might have surprised you. In first place for water use, we've got chocolate, second place beef, third place rice, and fourth place pizza. So the good news is you can feel a little bit less guilty about taking that extra slice of pizza. And finally, how many single use plastic bottles are used in the UK every day? So have a think which of those figures you think best represents the number and the answers will come up on the next slide. And the answer here is 38.5 million. So we've still got a long way to go in terms of our single use plastic bottle use in the UK. I took environmental science as I thought that is an extremely relevant topic to study at the moment in time with the world constantly trying to become more environmentally aware. My favourite part of the course was the energy resource topic that we studied in the second year. This topic taught me about the renewable and non-renewable energy sources that the human race exploit to create energy and discuss the pros and cons of each of them. Environmental science will help me further on in life as it has taught me what I can do to reduce things such as my carbon footprint. It has also taught me how to educate others and make them more environmentally aware. I took environmental science because it had a lot of crossover with many other subjects. Learning about resource extraction in the Lithosphere topic really helped when I learned about mineral formation in geology. And second year biology was made much easier because some of the things I studied, like Simpson's Diversity Index, I had already done in the previous year of environmental science. Many of my friends also said there was a lot of crossover with geography. The class had a great atmosphere and a wide variety of topics meant it never got boring. My favourite part of the course was the trips we took, as it showed how things we learnt in the classroom could be used in the real world, as well as being a lot of fun. Many skills I learned in environmental science will be useful to me in the future, particularly fieldwork skills. If you are doing any sciences at A-level or are planning to, to do any in the future, I would highly recommend taking environmental science as it will help support these other subjects. I chose environmental science A-level as it appeared from the beginning to be a good mix of topics on the natural world, something I have always enjoyed learning about on the more core, core science related topics. Also, I wanted to be educated on the systems in the natural world to back my belief that current environmental crises can be resolved with the correct actions. 
Personally, my favourite part of the course was the sewer topic, as it had an interesting range of both field and theory work, and opened my eyes to something I hadn't learnt about before. I also really enjoyed the biodiversity topic because it embodied my interest both in animals and how they can best be protected in the future. This A-level will help me in further life, life as I'm planning to do a degree in environmental science at UEA next year, and alongside A-level biology I have a lot of background knowledge to support this step forwards. After uni it would be my dream to go into something stemming from the course, such as conservation or working for the environment agency. A big part of environmental science is getting out into the natural environment to learn and you have trips and visits in both the first and second year of the course. In year one, the main trips that occur are to Highwoods Country Park, uh, where you get to design your own project and practice collecting data and sampling methods. And also to Colchester Zoo, where you get talks from experts about the illegal wildlife trade and medicines from nature. And both of those sessions are interactive. And so you get to carry out some activities and some hands-on work, as you can see in the photographs. In the second year, we have trips to Kew Gardens, where you get talks from experts on biodiversity and conservation, as well as being able to walk around the beautiful gardens and also a two day trip to Flatford Mill, where you get to design a mini research project and you get to investigate both in a river, in water and also in grassland. Thanks for listening and we hope to see you at the Sixth Form College very soon.